Weather. Always keep you on your toes. Wonderful. Here we go. We are following a feature moving westward into the Caribbean. Here it is. There it is. Look at that thing. Jeez. That's a big one out here. It, it could be a hurricane. There it is. It's very far to the south. So where I think this storm is going to go is like this, turn, and then I'm not sure about the U.S. coach. Yet. And there are so many possibilities that could happen. Oh, oh, no, really, really, really quick. I almost forgot. So many steering possibilities that could happen. What are you talking about? I see two. Two is not a lot of possibilities. I'm not even sure two is a couple. Well, I guess two is technically a couple. Count one, two. All right. So it looks like it could go up and hit the East Coast. Or go and hit the Gulf Coast. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents... Welcome to Asteroid Fight Club. I'm your host, Thor. Today we have a... We've got a video message. I'm gonna have to science the shit out of this. Hit the button, baby. So very, very likely we're gonna have Matthew on our hands relatively soon. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I've been burned a couple times this year on hurricanes, tropical storms, and depressions, so I've been taking a break. But we now have a good reason to come back for Invest 97L. This giant, huge, massive, and she's going low. Usually, that would be wonderful news. We we're talking about a tropical wave, tropical depression, tropical storm, possible hurricane that is massive, giant, and is going so low, she seems almost sure to be headed towards the Gulf of Mexico or the East Coast of America. So that is not good news. Uh... Now, the sheer size of this thing is mind-blowing, and it's a potentially dangerous storm for the Caribbean, possibly the United States. And I want to remind you, we are talking about possibilities, so it's a possibility that this thing could be giant, dangerous, and destructive. It is not a sure thing. I always know that. I'm not here to fearmonger, doom shit up. The world is doomy enough as it is. And this channel is called Thor News. It's supposed to be heroic, not cheeseball douchebaggy, okay? So I'm just reminding you again, hurricane season won't end for at least another month or two. And the jet stream has been flipping out. The mean sea level pressure has been off the charts. And just overall, everything is weird and bass backwards. Let's read some official shit, so. Will 97L threaten U.S.? Forecasts of what might happen to 97L beyond five days from now are speculative. But let's go ahead and speculate, shall we? A large upper-level low pressure system is expected to form over the mid-Atlantic states late this week. And the steering currents associated with this low are expected to be strong enough to pull 97L more to the northwest. By the weekend, according to a majority of the Sunday morning runs of the models, in this scenario, Haiti, Jamaica, Cuba, and the Bahamas, and Florida would be at greatest risk for strike by 97L. And I've seen a lot of things that say, hey, Florida, you're going to get hit a couple more times before this is all said and done. The models are in substantial disagreement of the evolution of this upper level low, which has been normal. European models, American models, all models have been all over the place. So nobody knows, bro. Nobody knows. But I will keep you posted on this one. We'll keep our eye on it. I know that, like, me and BP and... I think J7409 are usually pretty decent at covering this stuff for you guys. So, remember, we just cover worst case scenarios and possibilities. So if a storm doesn't happen, it's not my fault, man. It just looked like it had potential to be maximum damaging. Okay, peace out. God bless everyone. Stay cool and dry and calm. Try to have a sense of humor, man. All right. As we head our way through the end of September and October, still uh, plenty of kick left in the Atlantic hurricane season as it, we still have that secondary peak, which historically occurs right around October the 16th. We are following a feature moving westward into the Caribbean. So here's the thing about 97L. And as the system continues to move west, there our sciences could get better organized later in the week here. Five-day possible development area is what we have to look at. Here is our system. It's moving west. It's going to continue to move west. The National Hurricane Center is right now giving this a 90% chance of development. So this is going to continue to move west. I talked about how this system is going to continue to move west. I want to show you why. That upper level high that I talked about, that's what's going to steer it. Let's go to Wednesday afternoon. Here's our upper high. It's beginning to strengthen. Here's our system. But this west movement, I keep talking about it, it's going to continue. Let me go forward to Thursday evening. Here's your upper level high. Here's your system somewhere in here. Let's look at Friday night. You still have this upper high right here. What this trough is likely to do, it's likely to protect the Gulf of Mexico, at least the central Gulf Coast states on west. As long as this trough doesn't back up and it stays this deep, this will not allow this system to take a track into the Gulf of Mexico. 
That's the key. But upper high will continue to direct this west. Where do you think the global models have this going as we head into Sunday? I want you to watch it. Here we go. Saturday morning, Saturday evening, all of a sudden, at some point on Saturday, the models have this turning due north. Does that make sense? I could see it. I don't think it's correct. And nor should anybody. You should look at this model saying, how is it wrong, not is it right? I think this system, instead of taking a curl here, you're going to see this curl farther west. So the area I'm highlighting, just looking at the 500 millibar, looking at where the trough is, looking at the strength of the high, I think this system is going to get farther west before it takes a turn to the north. The area that I think would be somewhere in here. I think it would be east of Hispaniola and somewhere around Cuba. So where I think this storm is gonna go is like this, turn, and then I'm not sure about the US coach. I've never been getting into that because we're talking, by the time that would happen, we're talking a week from now. It could be a hurricane. But tracking it west track through Friday, Saturday, and then a turn. Maybe I'm wrong. Unless this trough is back here, then you'd have more room for this to come farther west. And I do believe that the models are too far east to a turn. And, oh, oh, no, really, really, really quick. I almost forgot. I want to show you two storms that have gone this far south into the Windward Islands. This is Ivan. We all remember Ivan. Look at this track right across Grenada, south of Jamaica, and then the turn came in the central Gulf Coast states. This is 1954 Hazel, but I do believe that this will be more of a track like this. And then we'll see about the U.S. But you never say never. All right. These are crazy days indeed. And there's still a lot of question over what could happen with 97L and where exactly it is going to wind up. Again, the next name on the list would be Matthew. Once this system gets into the Atlantic, not only do things in the upper part of the atmosphere get a little more conducive for development, but boy, take a look at the ocean content. And what you're looking at is the depth of the 80 degree water. The brighter the colors, like the reds, the bigger the depth that you have that 80 degree water. So that's a lot of energy. So I have no doubt once th if this system can maintain itself that uh, this is going to develop into a storm. And as we take a look at the October climatology as we go from September to October, areas shaded in orange are the places that are favored for development and systems that have organized or developed in these areas have tended to move off in the direction of these uh, darker lines here. So, uh, so if we look at climatology, it says beware systems that, that move into these areas this time of year like to be drawn northward. And this does look like it could be a significant feature uh, across the Caribbean. So just like an amazing cliffhanger in your favorite TV show, we're going to have to tell you on this one. Stay tuned. You notice uh, during the flickering, all right, you can see that uh, there's still some more tropical waves out there. Really? All right, here you go. So we're going to be keeping an eye on this thing, and uh, I'll keep you posted. Peace out. Man up. Get your big girl panties on, buddy. All right, Matthew. Here you go. Chat storm. Could hit the East Coast. No, it could hit the Gulf Coast. Weather. Always keeps you on your toes. Wonderful. And it seems a lot more verifiable than space news. Here it is. There it is. Look at that thing. Jeez. That's a big one out here. But here's our next system that we're watching well off to the south. In fact, it's already taking a much more southerly track than Carl or Lisa did, and that is eventually going to determine where it ends up. It's going to get pushed much farther off to the west, bringing it a lot closer to land areas.